Hello, I'm Professor Appleton, and today we're going to do an ink wash, paint an ink wash of this piece, um, of this pair. And uh, you've already seen the charcoal work of this, and now I'm going to do an ink wash using a permanent ink. And I'll show you some of the supplies and materials we'll be using. Um, you see, we have a, these. Um, it's plastic uh, end of a half of a dozen eggs, and uh, it allows for me to use uh, three different containers. At least I mean, that's all I'm mean, use three of these six to do different ink dilutions. And um, you'll also need uh, two two containers of water. One is going to be for the dirty dirtiest water. You're going to to clean your brushes first, and then after that, you clean it with clear water. Okay and you'll need a th number three or number four round tip brush and uh, of course you'll need the permanent ink okay with a dropper all right so i'm going to move this over to the side and begin with our begin with our um our two pieces with our pieces okay now as I showed you before, we're going to be working with that. Now you want to work with a uh, watercolor paper is best. Uh, it's an absorbent kind of paper that allows for you to to keep wet, but at the same time it, it absorbs um, uh, liquid mediums very well and won't warp and so on. It's made for doing handling liquid medium, media. And uh, However, a number of you may not have watercolor paper, but you may have Bristol paper, or at least a very stiff paper to work with that it's not going to warp. Um, it may not take the water quite as well or, or take the ink quite as well, but it's still good to work with as well, too. I mean, it's not made for doing wet work, but it's not bad, actually, to, when you, to work with, okay, for a wet medium. To start with, though, we're going to work with the watercolor paper first, okay? So, to begin, I want you to, um, now you may have a flat brush, which is good to do at the beginning. I'm going to take out a flat brush, uh, flat tip brush, just to spread some of the water around. What I want you to do is take some clear water, and you're going to do, and what I want to do, I mean, not necessarily for you to do, and I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clear water and stay within the edges of my shape of my subject, this pair. And you don't want to go outside the edges of this because the ink that I'm going to put down is going to want to go to the edge of wherever I put water. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. That's right. And you don't want to be too wet, but at the same time you don't want to be you don't want it to dry out too soon also. Okay, you just stay within that shape. Okay, and set that aside. And now I'm gonna show you um, the ink dilutions you're gonna work with. I'm gonna just put it over here like this. And you know, open you start with just a straight few drops of ink, just straight in. Okay, and then a little bit of water in the next one, and then a little lot more of water in the next one, okay? And this one we're going to put a couple drops, and this one we'll put maybe just one drop. Okay, this will give us di different dilutions of ink. Okay. Additionally, you want to have a paper towel um, at your ready, so that you can take a paper towel and uh, dry your brush whenever you need to, and maybe even sometimes work with a paper towel on your on your piece as well. Okay, so I'm going to stir this up a little bit, and stir this one up a touch. Okay, and you'll be able to see, you can test, and you can see how light that is, and you see this is going to be a little bit darker. Okay, and then of course, you've got the original piece, it's going to be very dark. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm going to move this back over here out of the way over to your right now if you're right-handed you want to be working on with this on your right side if you're left-handed on the left side okay so we've done the clear water on this piece already right we with this brush just make sure I've got enough again Let's see yeah it's still wet 
Okay. And got our painting, or got our photo here. And to start with, I'm going to do the shadow on the. I'm going to do the shadow on this side. And I'll start with. I'm going to start with the black to begin with. Okay. And it's going to be here. Actually, I might even just start with using the uh, flat brush to begin with, with this. Be a little more direct. Okay. Take it to a certain point. I might use my flat brush majority of the time for now. And one of the reasons we do put clear water down first is when we have a light area, and we will have certain light areas in this piece, um, we'll want to, like when we have a light area, like in this area right here, you want to keep the, it helps to put clear water down and then keep the ink away from that area. And that way also you're not going to have edges to your ink work. It's going to just bleed into that area and be soft value changes. Okay. You might want to have a little more. Now you can take a little bit away on this, but you'll see that it'll still, it's not going to be quite white, but I'm just going to give it a little bit more. A little bit because it got a little bit more than I wanted there. All right. Okay, so I'm going to take this and right to there. All right. Okay, now I'm going to clean this brush and come in a little bit more here. And we still want it to keep keep it fairly um, light in those areas, and but we can like move this into the area or something and just have it be a gradual kind of change. Okay. And right now, of course, I'm working flat with this, so. You, you want to work on a flat surface with this. I can take my small brush maybe and move into this area and do a little bit of drier areas, lighter area. strongest right here going up here into this area and it gives a kind of uh, you'll have it's not going to be perfectly accurate with this right you can be very very accurate with this if you wish but the way I'm painting with it right now kind of um, a little less formally you want to just kind of capture it in a very kind of an expressive quality giving it a kind of expressive quality to it Please. Please. okay we'll just go into this okay got a little bit too much water you got to be careful of that you don't want to get too much water where it starts to, um, you can see it does start to change it a touch. It starts to take away from the smooth easing smoothness of it. Okay. So 
<clears throat> Jesus Christ. Oh boy. Well, that's the end of that. Okay. Just I'm afraid you got to be careful with these plastic container that you don't inadvertently knock it over, <laughs> which I just did a little bit. Okay, so all right, and now we can leave it about like this, and you can see it's got a quality. Kind of expressive and kind of a loose informal way okay now i'm going to put this on the side well before i do that let me um first draw the stem on this okay and i'll just kind of very lightly do some of the clear doesn't have to be clear water for it because it's got a little bit of value to it already and i'll just take it out to here and then i'll take some some of the darkest area And you could just take a little bit here. Now, you don't want to work on the cast shadow yet. Um, however, you could you could do the um, this portion of it maybe a little bit stronger. cast shadow of the stem might be okay to do okay because we, later on we can come back in we're gonna make this very dark so we'll be able to cover that up okay okay so you can't work in the cast shadow yet because you have to let this dry first, otherwise it'll bleed into it. So you have that cast shadow you have to come back to. So instead, while we're waiting, I'm going to work on the Bristol paper just to give you a sense of what that's like. Okay, so we're starting with our flat brush once again. I'm going to get it cleaned. Okay, I'm going to work with clear water and I'm going to I'm going to go here, same as we did before on the watercolor paper. I just want to give you a sense of what it's like to work on Bristol, since some of you may be working on Bristol. And you can still get a very good ink wash work out of it, too. Even though it's not watercolor paper, it works almost as well as watercolor paper, if not just a little different is all. One thing is it dries kind of, seemingly dries quickly. It doesn't allow for the water to pool on top. It absorbs the water into the paper. So um, very, pretty quickly. So it's, you need to almost see the reflection of light to see where you have water and make sure that you hit every place. Oops, a little bit off the edge there. Just know that you don't want it to, you want to be able to, um, when you do the ink work, like right now, it's going to be like this. And go ahead and be bold with it, you know. However, you do have to be careful too. You can't be, um, can't make too many errors. Does I make an error? <laughs> just to show you, you can make an error and just kind of need to make it work for you. Now, if I make an error where the cast shadow is going to be. It's not going to be too much of a tr problem because we're going to take that cast shadow. I'm going to make that cast shadow very, very dark. Okay. Okay. Now you can see how it kind of is compared to is a bit different than a bit different than what we have with the other with the uh, watercolor paper 
it absorbs water differently. Mm -hmm. Pick it up a little bit. And pick up this up a little bit by drying your brush and this going back in and picking up little areas if you want it to be lighter or, white, or less water. And you just kind of can go back in and keep doing that. Okay, remember we're trying to keep this white, so that's why partly we use clear water on this at first is so we can keep an area like that kind of light and at the same time not create edges to the ink after it dries. You know, you're trying to make it look as if it blends in. And this area right here is kind of light, and, but we can go a little bit darker here. Now you can see also it's a little harder to work this over more than you know only a couple of times after you start working on it more it starts to be very difficult to um, keep you know keep the edges soft and, and blending into each other um, this is a little bit lighter in here and I come in some stronger darks here And you can see it's not bleeding in, into the water, into the, it's not absorbing it quite as softly as it could, as it does on the other, other piece, but. But it can give you, you know, it can give you an interesting effects, you know, that sometimes the watercolor paper doesn't. So, you know, and again, see how we are here. Can come in. Clean that, lighten that up, and do that a little bit. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. So the same thing as before is what we had before. You're going to have to um, so you ended up picking up some of this. When I go back over it, sometimes you end up picking up some of the ink. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go and let this one dry as well. And of course, I see this has to be out a little further here. Oops. You gotta be careful sometimes. And it's okay for it to be uh, not quite exact the way you want it. Um, you can see how this other one, now I'm moving into this area for the watercolor paper, just to show you. Um, you can see how it now it's kind of started to change. And you can go back in and work on permanent, since we're working on permanent ink here, this allows you to go back in and do some more work if you like. You know. But you do want to have clear water again throughout the whole piece so you don't have the um, edges to the, to the ink when it settles, okay? A little bit too much there perhaps. And you can see how it kind of created an edge, even though I don't want that to have an edge like that. Um, but because of the way the paper's kind of settled. Okay, but it's all right. Mm. All right. Okay, now I kind of am dry at that edge, so I can come in and 
I can do clear water again in this area. Doesn't have to be clear actually for this because we're going to go pretty dark with it. So might as well just go in and do a little bit gray so you show you where that is, that edge. And we're going to kind of go in with this. Hopefully it's not wet there, but because if you don't go in, if you go right away when both when the pier is wet, you'll end up it'll end up leading into the what you do in the cachet will end up leading into the pier, and you won't don't want that. So this gives you a little more leeway. Now what I might do here too is at the at this point out here, I might just go a little further out than where this is with my clear water. Mm. Yeah, well, it's not quite clear. <laughs> I want to make sure it's clear before I do this. I was going to, um, okay, and make it just a little bit less clear. I'm going to get some clear water. Are you right back? So in the future, I recommend using um, completely clear water and do a third, third cup. And the reason I'm doing this here is because it sh can show it as bleeding out a little bit and getting softer at the edges as the further you wait, further away you go with your, with your, um, with your shadow, and a little bit too much water there. Okay, and now you're going to have to go with very black and very dark here. Okay, and this is going to be darker than the, you want this to be darker than the pear itself. Okay. Usually, usually the cast the cast shadow is going to be darker than the sh than the actual subject, the, sh the actual shading on the subject. Okay. Okay. back in with this. Hmm. All right. And the further away from the subject you go, the lighter the shadow becomes. Which I think you'll see here. And it starts to get blurry at the edges as well of the shadow. This is why I was doing clear water past the edges here, just because I wanted to show it losing some of its edge. You know, it's going to be blurry at the edge. Mm, don't know if that's going to work though. <laughs> I may just have to try that out a little bit. Okay. All right, and there you have it. Okay, I'm going to stop at this point, um, and I'm going to go ahead and sign this piece. 
and you could do it a lighter thin black if you want to. Just but I'm gonna sign it. Okay. All right, and there you have it. Well, thanks for being here, and uh, here's an ink wash for you. I don't know if you can see it like this, but it was the finished product.